Hey guys, welcome back to the Sullivan Pursuit. I know I've been gone a while. I had to recover from my backpacking trip through Guatemala, which was great. Uh, I went to so many different places and I'm excited to take you through in like a three part series. And I wanna start with Antigua and hiking two volcanoes, not just one, but two volcanoes. So without further ado, Antigua, you are such an interesting place and I feel like you did take a little while to grow on me, but then you definitely did. It's been a week here and this yellow arch was one of my absolute favorite things. It's a colonial town with so much history and an interesting mix of Mayan and Mestiza people, the Mestiza people being a mix of Mayan, Spanish, and others. I really, really enjoyed my time here and I made some good friends and the fact that like you can see three volcanoes from the city is insane. It is a very small city. It's only one kilometer by one kilometer, which for Americans is like three quarters mile by three quarters of a mile, something like that. But they do deal with a lot of stuff. So they had earthquakes who took the heads off these sculptures and they've had issues with the volcanoes in the past. I got to try cacao juice. So Guatemala is famous for the cacao and to be honest, I didn't really like raw cacao or cacao chocolate, but the cacao juice was actually pretty good. I did really enjoy it. To me, it kind of tasted like a spicy apple juice, believe it or not. I randomly met these four girls from New Jersey and they were like, do you want to go on a hike at 3 a.m. tomorrow on a volcano? And I was like, yes. So we woke up at like two o'clock, got into a little shuttle to the volcano and started hiking up this volcano at three in the morning. It was absolutely insane. It had just had a lava river a few days before. We were able to find a little bit of lava to roast these marshmallows on, which was really cool. <laughs> so this is Volcano Pacaya. It is a slow erupting volcano, so it does erupt slowly over time. What we're sitting on now is actually dry lava from a few days earlier. And these dogs actually live in the volcanoes. Hey, Pacaya! Pacaya! It was not a very strenuous hike. It was only about an hour and a half hike up and a maybe about an hour and 10 minute hike down. Um, you definitely felt it a little bit, but it wasn't bad at all. And yeah, I very much enjoyed this hike and I recommend it. Even if there's no lava the time you go, it was still really cool. We were exhausted after waking up super early and so it was time to go back to Antigua, enjoy the city for a few more days and get ready for my big hike. I was very worried about doing this hike, but I'm so <laughs> glad I did it. I went with the company we chose in Charlie's and I was able to rent um, some nice winter jackets and hiking poles, etc. And I began my hike. So I ended up in a group with seven guys and me. And of course my fitness level isn't super high. So I was like, how am I gonna climb this mountain in this group or volcano? And so I struggled. I definitely struggled, especially at the beginning. Wait, Mom. I'm not. This is probably the hardest hike I've ever done. I'm 100% here. 
After the initial rough start, I actually became pretty good at the hiking up the volcano. So it was a four to seven hour hike. And after that first hour, it was a cakewalk for me. Like I was feeling really good. Even when we stopped for lunch, I was chilling. Like I was in good spirits, very happy. the option for you to get a porter to carry your bag up and down the volcano if you prefer. I was really proud of myself because I carried all of my stuff myself, which was great. Somebody did help me with one water. You also have the option for horses to carry your stuff, but I don't agree with that because they don't treat the horses very well here. But yeah, like carrying your own stuff is definitely a point of pride that you can say, I got everything up this volcano. You have the option to stay in tents, but I made the decision to stay in the Wichos and Charlie's Triangle Volcano Cabin Shelters because I thought they were more aesthetically pleasing and I really enjoyed the comfort after a long hike. So you climb Akatanongo and then you're able to watch Fuego in the distance erupt every 5 to 10 minutes and you can hear it. That late afternoon, about like four to eight, we experienced some absolutely insane weather. About half the group went on an extra additional hike to Fuego that I didn't do, but wish I had. But it was raining and hailing, and it actually ended up snowing, which they say very rarely happens there. So it was crazy cool to experience the snow at base camp and see the volcano erupting in the distance. morning around 3 a.m. I got up to summit the volcano to the top but unfortunately the guide did not recommend it because of weather conditions. It ended up clearing up but I didn't go. But we still wanted to do something fun and so you know what? Sometimes you just gotta get half naked on a volcano just for shits and giggles. <laughs> After this, I climbed down the volcano. It took about two, two and a half hours. I ended up running down the volcano because I was really nervous about slipping, but all went well. I lost a toenail, but that's okay. And on to the next place. Alright, 
thank you so much for watching i really appreciate all the support and next i go to the beach and the lake and i end up having a injury that i have to get figured out so stay tuned for that story next week and yeah love to love you and keep on <laughs> all right bye guys